official invitation. Check this out. March of 2018, I was able to live a dream. I was able to play in a PGA Tour Pro-Am alongside a top tier pro on a phenomenal golf course in front of a gallery. It was amazing. This is my Pro-Am story. So how did it all begin? I kind of knew that you had the ability to play in a Pro-Am just from hearing about it, watching PGA Tour on TV. And we witnessed it 2014 Golficity was given PGA Tour credentials for the first time as a media company to walk the grounds at Liberty National Golf Course. And we went on Pro-Am Day. So every Wednesday, you have the ability to play with a pro if you've got the money. And from what I've researched, it was 25,000, 2,500, 10,000, 15,000. The numbers are all over the place. I don't actually know the true amount that it cost to play in a pro-am. These are just some of the things that I've seen on the internet upon research. But over at Liberty National, being able to walk those grounds, see the men and women who were playing with pros like Tiger, Lee Westwood, Rory McIlroy, they were all right there at an arm's reach. You know, I said to myself, this is it. This is what I wanna do. How do I become like them? I wanna play the course. I want to walk with the pro. I want the gallery to watch because after all, it's probably the closest that I'll ever get to playing in a PGA Tour environment. So June of 2017, Golficity heads down to Manhattan for a media day, um, golf and body in New York City. And Frank and I head down there and we went into it with the idea that you could win this, we knew that it was the grand prize, but we didn't know how yet. We went through the motions, we did the media day, we interviewed Paige Sporanic, I remember that, she was on the podcast. Um, we worked with some top coaches teaching us how to putt, uh, teaching us some swings in the simulator. But towards the end of the media event, they held a little bit of a challenge. And the challenge was three holes at Bay Hill in a team format. So Frank and I were on a team, and the winner was going to win an all-expense-paid trip to the Pro-Am at Bay Hill in Orlando. And that included uh, lodging and flights and everything like that. Now Frank and I went into it saying, if one of us wins this, the other one is going to be their plus one. We're gonna leave the wives at home and the kids behind, and we're gonna go down and the winner is going to play and the other guy is going to be the caddy. So, turns out we ended up tying with uh, two women uh, who were on a team over at, uh, I believe Golf Digest was the company they were with. And it went to a putt off. Now the putt off was in front of a crowd. There was probably 30, 35 people there all watching. So the two ladies missed it. Frank went first, he lips out, gave me the read. Then I went, buried it. And as you could see, emotions, nothing. I was so numb, it didn't register yet until we left. And I was out on the streets of Manhattan, waving the sign around and uh, kind of doing my own dance, excited, got back to the car, called everyone I knew, told them what I just won all over social media. I was just so excited because I finally have the opportunity to live that dream. So fast forward now, I had to wait about nine months before getting to Bay Hill and leading up to it, I was prepping. You know, I was prepping, I was trying to get my game in order, I was trying to get my equipment in order because I knew this was probably a once in a lifetime and there was a good chance I wasn't gonna be back because I won this and it's not like I was gonna be able to fork over 20, 25,000 to play it again unless I win it again, but what are the chances of that, right? So leading up to it, uh, Golficity had some fun. We put together some fun commercials. We even got a production crew. Uh, we said, you know, how funny would it be if we kind of built this up like it all went to my head? And Frank, you're my caddy and you're gonna pretty much do everything for me. Um, you know, leading up to Bay Hill and at Bay Hill. You know, like caddy for life, it's been the joke, life sentence. You know, so. We had some fun with those videos. Those videos are on our YouTube channel. You can go back and check those out under the playlist uh, shorts. Go check that out. But, you know, fast forward, March, it arrives. And it's funny, we actually got to the airport, Westchester Airport, 
we go to the line to check our bags and we get up to the counter and the lady says, your flight is for next week. We kind of up to, your flight is for next week. And I look at Frank and I'm like, oh no, they booked our flights for the wrong, the wrong day. So we quickly called them. They quickly booked us another flight, another airline in another airport, which was a cab ride away. So we hopped in a cab. We went to, I believe it was LaGuardia or JFK. I forgot which where we had to go. And we flew out. We got down there a few hours later than expected, but we got there. So we ended up getting down there, settled into the hotel, went to the event. It all really happened the night before. What they do is a pro-am party. Now check this out. You come into this room with a bunch of seats lined up with a huge screen, all set up nice. Uh, you meet your pro-am partners that, that you've been selected to play with. Not the pro yet, so there's a foursome, one pro and three of us. So I met the other two guys. You know, I remember getting this envelope and pulling out the list of names in the pro-am of all the players. And of course, the sponsor of the event will typically get the first pick at uh, the top players. So that makes sense. I mean, in this case, the Arnold Palmer Invitational presented by MasterCard. So the MasterCard CEOs, CFOs, they're going to get first crack at the pros. I mean, Tiger, Jason Day, uh, Rory, who else was there? Jimmy Walker, Brant Snedeker. I'm just trying to think back. Oh, so many good ones. So, you know, we're going through and we're, we're making these picks in our mind, highlighting, ranking them. I was physically writing number one, number two, number three. And as they got selected, we would just cross them off and just keep going down our list. But before we get to the lottery, they say, head over to the swag tent. So now I'm thinking, what else could they give us? So you head over to this swag tent and it's kind of like the Oscars. It reminds me of the scene in The Sopranos when Chris Moltisante meets Ben Kingsley and they go uh, to the luxury lounge. This is elegant. It really is. Take the chrono too? Are you sure? Of course. It was very similar to that. And I remember walking in and, and some of the items that they gave us were sunglasses, a pair of Oakleys that I, I love but lost since, of course. Uh, a, a luggage with the Arnie umbrella use it to this day, absolutely love that piece of luggage. A wedge, a Callaway wedge that they, um, they give you with the Arnie umbrella colors with the umbrella kind of stamped into the wedge, which I haven't put into play, still has the cellophane on it. It's in my home office, just sitting on the, uh, on the wall. You get the little medallion piece, which now this is important because this is something that you need to enter the grounds. If you lost that, you can't play the next day. So as you can imagine, I guarded that thing with my life. I did. Uh, what else did they give us? Oh, a bag tag, really cool. They, um, they give you a, an API, the Arnold Palmer Invitational. They give you an API uh, bag tag that you can have forever. That's actually um, really cool. They stamped it right in front of you. They ask you what your name is and what you want to put on it. Of course, I put Golficity on it as well. And there was a whole bunch of other things. There were some shirts and things like that. I think I even gave Frank something. I told him he can have something because, you know, my caddy got to take care of him, right? Uh, but I think I ended up taking most of the good stuff. So after that, we head back over to the hall, the clubhouse, to do the lottery. And we all sit down, and now I'm starting to get a little nervous. Now it's go time. So this thing was well organized. They have someone up there with the microphone, almost like, like a bingo event, just rolling numbers, B28, B, you know, just like boom, 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 quick. But in this case, it was calling your number out of the lottery ball, whatever. I, I forget what our number was. All right, team Mike's team, team is team two. Brent Snedeker. Uh, but when we heard that number, we knew we were on the clock. So of course, we knew going in who we wanted. And sure enough, we didn't get picked until like third to last. Team two selects Francisco Molinari. Team two selects Francisco Molinari. I got excited because Italian American, uh, families from Italy, both my mother and father's side, 100%. I thought that was my icebreaker. And believe it or not, I did talk to him about it the next day. You know, it was, it was just a great experience. Uh, a lot of nerves, you know, because, you know, on the clock, who are you gonna get, who are you gonna get? But that was cool, that was an amped up process in there, huh? Ooh, lots of nerves in there. Yeah, it's just like, you're we on deck, you're playing. ready, it's 30 crazy. seconds, they start ringing that bell at 10 seconds, you're, yeah, you gotta, we were ready. We were you gotta pick, yeah. Called everyone I knew again, let, let them know. After that, we ended up 
heading back to the hotel because it was getting late and we had the 7, 10 a.m. tea time. All the big players like Tiger and Ricky and those guys, they were all going off super early. Now think about that. Some pro-ams, they separate the am from the pro with different ranges, but Bay Hill didn't have a different range. The day we've been waiting for has arrived. We're up, the alarm worked, which is great. This guy's ready. Ready to rock. I'm letting him carry the bag before I've got to take over <laughs> duties in a few minutes. I was actually able to warm up on the range about seven spots down from Tiger Woods. You know, the pros were on one side, we were on the other. But it's funny because I ended up following him from the clubhouse where Joe LaCava, this bag was right outside of the player's lounge. I was eating in the amateur lounge. It's funny they didn't let Frank in. He had to sit outside because it was players only. We always joke about that to this day. But after that, we ended up walking to the range when Tiger walked. And uh, we went out there and we hit a couple balls. It was still dark out. They had to roll in these lights uh, because it was like, 5.45 a.m. And then the sun came up around 6.40. We headed over to the, to the, uh, the putting range, the putting green, I should call it. And you know, the pros were actually there too. So Jimmy Walker was out there, but they kind of stayed to their side. We stayed to our side, even though we were on the same large green. And then we went off and you know, they, you go through the tunnel, you get your tee sheet, you get your tees. They call your name, small gallery at the start because it was early. But uh, it was cool to hear your name called on the first tee of a PGA Tour course with a pro at a Pro-Am. Did not get off to a hot start. I think it took me like five holes to really reduce or get rid of all of the nerves. I was slicing balls and I sliced my opening tee shot. I ended up making like a double bogey on the first hole and then realized that if you don't make par, just pick up the ball and move on. Because that's how a Pro-Am really works. Par or better. Um, Anything worse than that, just pick up. So we played the day. Um, I didn't want it to end. I remember walking up 18 and I know Frank gave me a pat on the back and he was like, this is it, man. I remember him saying, you know, great drive, finish out strong, uh, kind of cherish this moment because it's coming to an end. And I ended up, you know, playing fairly well. You know, I think I had two birdies. Uh, I birdied the hole that wraps around the lake. Uh, Molinari birdied it too. And then I went on after that and parred the par three right after that. Sand shot out of the bunker. The, the, the sand shot was so good, the crowd actually gave me a nice round of applause. So back to 18. After hitting my approach shot into a greenside bunker on 18, it was walking up to the green with Molinari and just having that last final chat. You know, I was talking to him about his schedule and what's to come. and even thanking him for the experience and telling him how I felt about the experience. Uh, went on to make an amazing approach shot to like four feet and I, I made that par and, and the gallery ended up clapping for me, which I thought was probably the coolest thing in my life. So much history has happened on that 18th green. And I remember walking through the tunnel and um, Frank and I had some fun with a, with a mock press conference afterwards. Overall, it's an experience that if you have the ability to do it, then do it. <laughs> Bottom line, do it. If you're a fan of the game, a fan of the tour, a fan of golf. And it's funny because I ran into Molinari about six months later and I always joked with him that after playing with me, he went on with this tear, this, this tear, he just started winning events. And he only won one event in his life before that. So the handshake on 18, I transitioned some type of good vibe to Molinari. And you know, when I saw him at Ridgewood Country Club, that six months later, he even said it. He said, hey, you gave me the juice. Hey, how are you, man? Good, good to see you. You're playing great. Thank you. Come on, here we go. You got this one, right? Just keep it up. And that's where the joke came from. Met up with one of my favorites, Chico himself. Hi guys. Play well this week. Thank you. Thank you. That guy right here. So I gave Molinari the juice. He ended up going on and winning the Open Championship. He won a major. It was incredible. And you know, a couple of more events after that. And then the next year, he actually won at Bay Hill. 
I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you couldn't tell a better story than that. He won at the event a year later um, from where I met him. So that's it. That's my Pro-Am story. And um, if I get the chance to do it, I'm gonna do it again and again and again and again. Um, Frank jokes that he wants to do it and he wants me to caddy on the next one. All right, maybe I'll do that. But it was a great experience and the experience of a lifetime. Legs hold it up. Good man. I've been training for this. Wearing a lot of hats today. Stacked up today. He's doing a great job, everyone. Got a solid caddy here with me. Out of work today. Mm -hmm.